Hey everybody, Tyrone Shoes here, FunkyGuitar.com and today we're going to continue our discussion on rhythm and mostly apply it to single notes and we want the right hand to be undisturbed wherever possible when executing these passages because you really don't want to be thinking about it you want to have at least one thing on automatic pilot so you can concentrate on the other and it's much easier to have the right hand on automatic pilot so that we can concentrate on where the left hand is going to go. Um, we're going to use Led Zeppelin's Live and Love and Made as an example. And kind of funny arrangement on this song, there aren't many parts. I will show you all the parts and it's up to you to listen to the source material so you know what goes where. Now, the song starts out, there's no intro, it starts right with the vocal. And it's What's, what is referred to in the business as palm muting, which is a term I don't really like. It's really the heel of your hand, and it rests right on the bridge, right on the saddle. If you go too far this way, you get no sound. If you get too far this way, you get just the regular open note. So a very small window, you put the heel of your hand right on the bridge, so you're getting some sustain. Anyway, we're going to use the open A string, and then the seventh fret a, uh, D string, it's an A note, it's an octave, and it's a crescendo, so you're going to start soft and get loud. And you're going to play eighth notes. The last one will be a quarter, because you have to slide down to get into the riff. So it goes one, two, three, with a four, and one, and two, and three, and four. So the last one is a quarter note. Slowly, one, two, three. With a So I went into the riff. Now just to, I'll play the notes slowly and I won't strum them as I would when I'm playing. So don't watch my right hand, watch the left hand. So that's the riff. And it ends with an A and then a D chord and back to an A chord. Now in time, and if I was smart, I took the right hand out of the shot on the slow portion, but I'm going to put it back in now so you can see both hands working. Okay, so slowly. One, two, the most important thing is when I missed the strings on purpose because I have to keep the time, right? When I do this part, one, two, three, four, bang, right there. Now, the chorus is D7, A7, D7, and back to E7. And the D7 and the E7 are the same, it's just on the 5th and the 7th fret. So the D7, it's a bar chord version of an A7 chord, right? Then the, the A7 is a bar chord version of an E7 chord. Or it's just an A with the pinky off, right? The, the D7 is this D, D chord right here with those three notes and the middle notes taken back a half step. And, Nobody's finger can ski jump like that, so you got to use separate fingers. And back to the D7, and then the E7, and there's a stop. Okay, so with the strum, one, two, three, four. There's a crescendo after the first verse. This. Now 
the next verse, no riff, right into the live and love. But other than that, it's the same. And that's how the verses go. The verses, uh, the first verse has the riff, the second verse doesn't, the third verse has it, the fourth verse does not. But there's no new parts. Um, at the end of the, the last chorus, the second one, there's no crescendo at all. For the last one, there is an A crescendo, just like a verse, but there's no vocals. And this is the, this is the heads up for the end of the song. And you do the riff three times. how the song ends. And that's all the parts. So the part's pretty simple. The guitar solo goes over the chorus. Goes over that part. Now it starts with basically slightly with a couple of uh, stray outside notes. It's the A major pentatonic scale. Pattern one, it's the one that everybody learns first. And yeah, you hard rockers will say, well, that's what I play for F sharp minor. And it is, but it's in that case the root would be would be there on the F sharp, but we're gonna use A as the root. So yes, it's the same scale as you would use for F sharp minor, but the root is no longer F sharp, it's A, and it's kind of a countrified. note in there. Now in this song it's it's going to be the the A major pentatonic scale with the addition of this D note. Uh, the Allman Brothers do that all the time. Like they do that all the time. They throw take a regular major pentatonic scale and add the fourth. Now if they added the seventh too it would be a complete major scale but they don't, and it's not used here either. Now, the one funny note is the first note, and it's a of each of the of the first two phrases. There's an F. It's a leading tone because this F sharp here is resonant in our D7 chord, so this note leads into it. And, and actually, if you stuck there, it would sound pretty nasty, but they don't. So it basically creates tension momentarily, and then it's resolved right into the uh, to the F sharp note. Okay, now. I'm going to play this slow and I want you to watch the right hand just as much as the left hand. One, two, three, four. Okay, now those three bends are quarter note triplets, so that breaks the pattern a little bit and they will be all downstrokes and I'm not going to go into the math of that. But just trust me. Um, so notice while I'm bending the string, I'm still keeping time. Three, four. Two, three. Second phrase is the same, except that's a pull off instead of the pick note. But other than that, it's the same. Now here's the last lick, the second half of the second phrase, and this is going to be double time. So if I'm keeping this time, the last phrase will be in this time. Those last notes are all downstrokes because because I'm keeping this time. So they're all going to be downstrokes. Now, if I want to break that down, it's a single mute and then it's a whole bunch. They're not triplets. That's a mistake. Do not call them triplets. They are sets of sixteenth notes, but there are three sixteenth notes. And what's going to happen is 
you will see that each little set of three is going to alternate as far as where the picking starts. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know all this till I started that. Um, breaking it down for students because I, I naturally learned to just keep time but it should be convenient check this out it starts with a single mute and then there's a bunch of threes and the, so obviously since we started with a down the first set of three starts with an up and then it's going to go down up down etc so watch this up down As far as what finger you want to use, that no rules there, no rules there at all. You can, if you want, to use your first finger because it's closer when you go like this. That's obviously closer to get down with your first finger. But at some point, you're going to have to get to a different finger. Uh, you can use your second finger. I feel more control of the bend if I go. Even if I use the second finger, I'll crawl down for the third finger for my, for my bend. Uh, and in fact, you could actually convert, you can start walking, you can go. Anything that works for you is fine. Well, to sum up, it's just, I can't stress enough how you want to keep the right hand just on automatic pilot. You know, you just don't really want to have to think about it. Um, it thinking is bad. <laughs> I mean, it's what you do in the woodshed, and it's what you do when you um, have the time to work things out. But on the gig, at a jam, it's not something you want to do. So you need to keep something on the back burner so you can think about something else. I mean, you know, when I improvise, it's the same thing. <laughs> So during that whole section, I'm just, the right hand was just, just kind of strolling along. And that allows me to concentrate on creating music as far as what notes I choose. I don't want to have to think about this. That doesn't mean it doesn't happen every now and then, but you want to keep it to a minimum. Um, and, in, and, this, and in the uh, Discuss Led Zeppelin song, um, we will be going from, from single time to double time, like for the verses, double time. And then normal time for the riff. And in the solo, most of it's single, one one stroke per uh, per beat. Right? But then for the end. going double. So this song presents a few challenges in that regard and a lot of rock songs do and a lot don't but the fact is some do so you're gonna to have to learn how to do it and you want to kind of compartmentalize it in other words know when you're going single and know when you're going double and um, and so make that transition and then stay focused on the on the uh, division that you're at until it's time to, to get out of it but you don't want to be thinking about your strokes ever if at all possible and I know that's not realistic you will have to do it sometimes but we want to keep it to a minimum well I hope you've enjoyed this and we'll see you down the road in the next video